Now this video is a basic introduction into macroeconomics, but before we can get into that topic, we need to understand what is economics. Economics is a social science that focuses on the study of how humans make decisions in the face of scarcity. Now what is scarcity? Well, that's an economic problem where needs and unlimited wants for goods, services, and resources exceed what is available. Resources include labor, tools, land, and raw materials. Now think about what scarcity does. Scarcity, it causes people, individuals, to make decisions. What kind of decisions? Decisions as to how to allocate resources efficiently to maximize the things that they may want or need. Here's an example. Let's say if you have $500. And there's two things that you want. You want a laptop and you want to buy, let's say an iPhone. Now for the sake of keeping things simple, let's say that the iPhone that you want to buy costs $400. Chances are today it might be much more than that, but just for the sake of illustration. And the laptop that you want to buy costs $300. Now, because your income, or rather, not your income, but the amount of money that you have right now is limited, you can't buy both of these items. You have to make a decision. Do I want to buy the laptop or do I want to buy the iPhone? Which one will be more useful to me? So you have to weigh the benefits of having a laptop versus the iPhone. And so you have to make a decision because of the limited capital that you have. Now granted, many economists won't consider money as a resource. Some may say it's a financial resource, um, but nevertheless, with limited capital, you need to make a decision in terms of how you wanna use it to buy the things that you want or need. And so that's an example of economics, how you make decisions in the face of scarcity when the things you have is limited. Now let's talk about what's considered a scarce resource and what's considered a free resource. Air. Would you consider air as a scarce resource or a free resource? Air would be considered today as a free resource because it's abundant. It's free of charge. You don't have to pay someone to breathe air. Now this could change in the future. If you live in a city where the air is polluted, you might actually pay for clean air. But for most of us, the air that we typically breathe is relatively clean, so that would be considered a free resource. Now, what about water? Would you say water is a scarce resource or a free resource? Well, this one depends on where you live. For instance, if you live near a lake or a river where you can easily access clean water for free, then it's abundant. You don't have to pay for water. If someone comes to you and say, hey, listen, I could sell you a bottle of water for $2. There's no need for you to buy it if you can just go to the river and get water for free. Now, let's say if you're living in a desert, then in that location, water would be considered a scarce resource because you could die if you don't drink water. And if you meet somebody that has water, you might be willing to pay more than $2 for a bottle of water. You might pay 10 or $20 because in that location, water is considered a scarce resource. So sometimes whether something is considered scarce or a free resource may depend on the location or the situation that you're in. What about labor? Would you consider labor a scarce resource or a free resource? Labor, particularly skilled labor, that's a scarce resource. Many businesses are looking for skilled labor because that can affect their profits. And so they're willing to pay top dollar for skilled labor. 
One could also argue that labor could be considered a free resource, particularly the labor of volunteers, where they don't charge for their services. But for the most part, labor is considered a scarce resource. Now what about land? Would you consider land a scarce resource or a free resource? Now this too could depend on location. For instance, let's say if you want to buy land in a city. Land in a city is very expensive. Imagine buying land in Los Angeles or San Francisco. Because there's so many people living there, the value of land is so high. But let's say if you want to buy land on a desert plain where it's relatively available and no one's living there, then the cost to buy such land is very, very low. But for the most part, because land is limited in supply, I mean, we're not making more land, so land is considered a scarce resource as population continues to climb. But particularly in cities and urban areas, it's even more scarce. You have to pay much more for land in those areas. Now let's work on this example problem. Karen is deciding whether to hire someone to paint her apartment or to do it herself. The cost to hire someone to do it is $1,200. If she does herself, she estimates that it will take 20 hours to get the job done, which she could do over the weekend. She also estimates the cost of buying the materials needed to get the job done is 200. If she decides to pay someone, she can choose to work overtime during the weekend and receive $40 an hour. So is it better for Karen to hire someone or to do the job herself if she is wealthy or option B if she doesn't have much money in the bank? So we mentioned that a limited capital could be considered a limited financial resource, but another scarce resource is time. Many people, they value their time and there's only so much you can do in a day. So let's look at part A. If Karen is wealthy, which decision do you think she would give priority? A decision that will save her money or save her time? Well, the average wealthy person is usually more concerned about saving time as opposed to saving money. If, of course, the expense is not too high. When dealing with expenses that don't cost very much, wealthy people tend to be more concerned with time. So we're going to go with that option for part A. So is it better for Karen to paint the apartment herself or is it better for her to hire a painter? Which decision will save her the most time? If she does it herself, it will cost her 20 hours of time. If she hires a painter, chances are it will probably cost her anywhere from 15 minutes to an hour to research the right painter and then to call him to come over to do the job. So hiring the painter saves her time. This is the option that she will most likely choose if she's wealthy. She will be more concerned about saving time than saving money. Now what about part B if she doesn't have much money in the bank? Well in this case Saving time is not as important as saving money. So she's going to make the decision that will save her the most amount of money if capital is limited. So let's see which option saves her the most amount of money. If she hires the painter, it will cost her $1,200. If she decides to do it herself, it will only cost her, financially speaking, $200 to get the materials. So looking at these two options, it's better if she decides to do it herself. Now granted, you have to consider also that she could work while hiring a painter. If she decides to go to work on the weekends and work overtime, she can earn $40 an hour. And the 20 hours that it will take her to paint the apartment, she could spend that time at work. So 40 times 20, 4 times 2 is 8, add the two zeros. If she works instead of painting the house or the apartment, she can earn 800. 
and that 800 she could use towards paying the painter. So the net cost of hiring the painter if she goes to work at her job is 400, which is still greater than her paying in the apartment. So either case, it's better if she paints her own apartment because it will save her the most amount of money. Now, what about if she was earning more money? Let's say if, if she worked overtime, she could earn $80 an hour. Is it better for her to paint the apartment or is it now better for her to hire someone? Let's find out. If she does it herself, she's going to pay $200. I'm going to put a negative sign to indicate that her bank account will decrease by $200 in value if she does it herself. And this will cost her 20 hours of time. Now, if she hires the painter, she's going to have to pay $1,200. So her bank account is going to decrease by that amount. But it saves her 20 hours of time. Now, she can go to work at her job and use those 20 hours to get paid. 80 times 20, 8 times 2 is 16. Add the zeros, the two zeros, you get 1600. So by using those 20 hours to go to work, her bank account will increase by 1600. So the net result is that her bank account increases by 400. And in both cases, she's spending the same amount of time. 20 hours. So the time value here is the same. But hiring a painter, she actually earns an additional $400 if she goes to work. If she does it herself and don't go to work, her bank account decreases by 200. In this case, because she's earning more money at her job, it's better for her to go to work while hiring a painter because she'll end up with more money at the end of the day. So this is the basic idea of economics. It's the study of how people make decisions in the face of scarcity. So hopefully this example help you to see the value of money versus time when making decisions. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you found it to be educational. Thanks for watching.